Welcome back. This is Mark Delacruz, yet again, coming back to you, talking to you about Lore Link, or in more particularly, we're playing through a game, and I'm going to do my quick audio checks here, make sure that everyone can hear me, make sure that captions are coming across, and that people in Discord are audio, basically can be heard. So, question one, am I live? Can people hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do I have captions? You have captions. Sweet. I see captions. All right. Cool, cool. I have confirmed. And basically, people on Discord should have heard themselves echoing back to themselves, so they could probably now mute the yes. stream so they don't have to listen <laughs> to themselves, talk to themselves. That's just me. <laughs> I get that joy. Um Actually, I'm not hearing myself right now, which is kind of weird because it means I it means I have some setting somewhere wrong, but the internet can hear me, so it's fine. All right, so welcome back. It is November 1st, which is the day after Halloween, but, well, you know, it's close enough to Halloween that we're still continuing with some of the spooky stuff. Um, and by that in particular, I mean that we are continuing with um, our Vampire the Masquerade game um as you can see here and here i am look there's a microphone in the picture Woo. there we go um we are continuing with the vampire the masquerade 20th anniversary dark ages jumpstart called legacy of lies uh where we last left this group we were they were basically they were they were asked by their prince uh to pay off a favor that their sires had uh, essentially indebted them to them by being this by, by wit of being their children um, and that is to go speak uh, to a certain individual in this case uh, one Adrien Dubois uh, who is located in Wuhan, France um, and basically he has some basically he is a painter who is often known for his paintings uh, that contain messages or uh, secret signs or other things. Uh, and the prince basically is, is received word from this individual that he has information that he needs to communicate urgently to a trusted individual so that the prince may be aware of it. Uh, the prince has chosen you four, no three. Um, as one of our members, Tony, sadly will not be able to make this stream as he is currently, basically, currently off flying in the wind. Um, and so he will rejoin us at some later point, but not today. Um, in any case, basically, you've been asked, these the three of you have been asked to go find out what this message is. As you are three outsiders to the court, uh, he trusts you slightly more, less. Um, knows that you aren't involved in the current inter-court inter politics, which uh, entwine all the other members of his court. Uh, you get the feeling that there are individuals he does not trust throughout his, scattered throughout his court, as, as there is with any good vampire court, obviously. Um, you were approached afterwards by one member of that court, a Merwin uh, Hayward, um, who was basically particularly concerned. You might, you might be distressed. Yes, legacy of lies. It happens all the times. Um, and basically, and she was concerned about the basically concerned, but willing willing to help in any way that they could. Um, and as such, basically, she uh, asked you in what ways she could be helpful, and seemed to be basically very concerned and pressing until she got a very polite telling off uh, by Martine's character, Ellen Bennett. Um, we pretty much told her that basically, thank you and goodbye. Um, uh, basically, on her way out, she did, however, um, betray, basically kind of confide in you that she does have concerns about uh, Marcus's fit this to rule he feels basically she feels that he is getting older and tired and therefore uh maybe maybe basically maybe maybe making mistakes shall we say um however she did uh very nicely um 
set you up with as good you asked for as good would ask for information um as good she did as good she did send give you a letter of introduction to captain mayweather um i said plymouth originally and then i looked at math it probably wouldn't be plymouth it would probably be portsmouth so you're going to portsmouth not plymouth not that i think anyone will be particularly cared um this is this great geography it's hard. yeah yeah, let's give, they do a lot of it. It's good. They talk about, I was actually looking in the actual original uh, Dark Ages book and they're like, yes, this is historical. No, don't get bogged down in textbooks trying to make sure that your campaign setting is 100% accurate. I mean, if you really like that, you can, but there are points where you just kind of somewhat have to kind of hand wave in terms of which, basically where things were, what basically what things actually existed at what point, whether or not your care obviously your characters are all vampires running around that weren't really there. So there obviously would be some kind of discrepancy. So you're it's an alternate history. Hand wave, hand wave. Um so that is where we left you. Um you had left the basically left the basically the uh basically his court in actually I believe he actually had you visit in Bath, not Chester, which is an important a important distinction. Um, and you must make your way towards uh, towards Portsmouth. Um, you have a letter of introduction to a captain there. Um, it is only a mere 80 miles uh, from Bath to Portsmouth. Um, Basically, you basically typically you can travel about twenty miles a day on horseback. Um, the biggest disadvantage is that you are playing during the Dark Ages, which means the fact that all those nice Roman roads you used to have have kind of fallen into disrepair, um, and no one has actually sat down and organized and repaired all of those roads. So it's not like there's a very convenient uh, coach service waiting for you. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but you're probably, so you're probably about a, basically a little less than a week's ride away from Portsmouth, um, traveling by night, obviously, given that you are vampires, um, and staying in various places along the way. Um, yeah, staying indoors, out of the sunlight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so before you leave Bath, is there any particular plans that anyone... With anything anyone wishes to do, uh, set up or contact or do anything else, um, you do basically if you have basically since basically people in here have not necessarily played before on your character sheet, you will note that you do have a background which says contacts. For the most part, normally basically as part of character creation, you would kind of hand wave, you would kind of put together what your contacts were ahead of time. The alternative is that in game you can pretty much declare at any given point this is my contact um this is this, this is what they are this is what they do for me within reason um and the, <laughs> basically they become you can't be like ah i have a contact who knows everything which is going on in all of the courts and can just tell me the entire plot line and he always talks to me and he's right next door and it, no that's not the way this works um but let's give you wish to Where is this information? Um, if you look on, your... on the primary tab, yes. scroll down to the advantages section, and it will be one of the listed backgrounds. Ah, it is not okay. under the backgrounds tab, which is where you would expect to find backgrounds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It took me a second as well. Uh... Yeah, two pips and contacts, but um, I think I'm good right now. I'm happy. As long as we can have a coach and be indoors of the coach, I am happy to uh, the simply ride and with make stops coaches along the way. Is coaches are harder to get uh, because of the fact that, again, there are no roads. So... Oh. Yeah, <laughs> that's the. So that's there's the no tr- road. There's no road from point A to point B, so no coaches. Oh, that's fun. Yep. Like we may- had mentioned. Good. We had mentioned getting some food before heading out, so that we wouldn't have to worry about feeding. 
I was planning to do that in the port town, but um, you have. If it's yeah, going to take maybe... three days to get there. Yeah. Uh, Ibrahim will go and find himself something to eat, but I don't really wish to role play that out. <laughs> That's fine. That is perfectly acceptable. Um, for the basically for the purposes of this, go ahead and just do roll one d ten. Um, basically for basically assuming basically assuming the fact that you are uh basically just feeding here in town. Um, I will basically if nothing else there basically the you could go back in and talk to uh the uh king's not the king's the prince's uh chamberlain. Um, who will arrange for something, basically a uh, a bite to eat before you go on the road, as it were. Yeah, that's probably wise. Just ask the Chamberlain for some food. Um, go ahead and... Oops, basically I'm looking up something else. There it is. Um, go ahead and roll me a... Each of you can roll a d10 and add two to it. Uh, that is the number of points that you will receive from uh, your meal. Five. So that means that in what do we add the points? In the blood pool? There is a blood pool down below. Um, so uh, up to my maximum blood, I assume? Yes. You cannot exceed your maximum blood. I'm pool. full. Ditto. Um, yeah, there is one thing that I will want to do, and that is, since we cannot take a coach, I want to be absolutely sure that we we have specific stops along the way. Okay. Um, so with that we do not get caught outdoors. If that means that I need to have a contact, or if I can just ask around town, but I, I want to make sure that we know where we're stopping. I mean. The answer is basically there is, there are there's contacts. Two major contacts. Basically, each dock dot is a major contact. Um, allies is the basically contact and allies yeah. are how they are basically how they are broken up. I don't think anyone in this game has allies. Um, basically, contacts are people you can basically you can manipulate to provide basically friends you can rely on to provide you accurate information. Um, Basically, allies are basically are more likely to be people who are willing to die for you. Contacts are people who are willing to give you information, and sure basically that. expect to be compensated in return. Yep. Um. DM's next pool. Okay. Uh so you're basically you're wanting to basically in terms of. The route is basically to get to. Um, you are fairly basically basically the English countryside is scattered with farmhouses and other such yep. things along the way. Um, basically, some of which basically some of which are occupied, some of which are not. Um, that basically. It basically, finding a place basically finding a place to shelter for the night is not necessarily difficult. Um, yep. It basically part of it will depend on how far you're willing to go, uh, in terms of basically, okay, are you like basically, we will find an inn and heavily bribe an innkeeper, uh, to allow us to essentially seal up a in room for the day. Um, uh, okay, that's one way of dealing with it. We, we basically, second is we find a basically, we find a farmhouse, uh, basically, we search for one that basically that is. Uh, abandoned, and we burrow. Basically, we we hide ourselves in a root cellar, essentially. Um, or we will stop wherever we want to stop, and basically kick whoever's in the house out, or otherwise convince them to allow us to take shelter in their root, basically root cellar, and then leave, uh, leaving them in one form or another. Yeah, Gareth's preference is going to be the one that is the least intrusive, which would mean finding abandoned cellars and and such along the way. Okay. Or caves or something. Yep. 
Uh, oh, some, some place such, we can avoid interfering such discomfort. with people. Such discomfort. Yes, yes, there may be some discomfort, but it's avoids attracting unwanted attention. You know how it is. Unfortunate. Okay, so. I prefer to avoid any human contact except for the ones that I'm manipulating. Um, go ahead and give me a, we'll do perception investigation. Um, basically just go ahead and give me an overall roll and the number of successes that you get is the number of each of you could roll that. Um, and since it's a, it's about a five day journey, like less than that, so a three day. It was 80 miles, so you're going about 20 miles, so four day journey. So, where's the investigation? Uh, under Thank knowledges. You. Thank you. Ah, there it is. <clears throat> Ellen, you're the last one. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to roll it because I'm clicking on investigation, but it's not doing anything. Um, you have to go to click dice pools. The dice tab. Okay. And scroll down to your main dice pools. You have to set it up as a pool. I'm so confused. I remember doing this last time, and now I'm so confused. Dice. This is much like what we do. <laughs> You're also involved in a werewolf campaign that we play from time to time. This is similar to how that works, if you remember that. Yes. Okay, I found it. Okay. Perception investigation. Uh... This is the one interesting thing that is great. Roll 20s character sheets, while there are kind of, well, in many cases, very janky. Um, they do basically. They are at least. They do seem to support a wide range of systems. And I'm, I am curious. And I need to investigate how other systems, such as uh, Foundry, for example, handle handle stuff like this. I'm sure that they have third party support just as well. I just need to figure that out at some point. And then uh, Martine has fallen out of roll 20 and she's back. Okay, cool. All right. That is a total of six successes. Um, one of which is a basically 10, basically 10, 9, 1. Okay. So yes, you are able to find basically for basically, you do not have to go out of your way in order to find any look, basically find locations. Um, you're able to find relative locations that meet your standards relatively easily. Um, and because of that, you will only basically essentially then lose the four days worth of blood. Uh, so basically each morning you wake up, you essentially, you expend a blood point in order to get your body moving again, lest you just remain, uh, asleep as it were. So, uh, basically, so you will lose four blood out of your pool. Got it. Down but to you six. will, you will arrive in. Just... Yep. Sorry, is the blood pool just laggy? Like I'm having a hard time clicking off. You have to click the one before the one you actually want. Are you kidding? No. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm good now. Okay. Um, can you guys see how that's going? Yeah. Um, so you arrive in the Visky, you arrive in the port city of Portsmouth. Um, this is a fairly bustling, uh, town, uh, as being a major point of trade between England and France at this time. Um, several basically, several basically, there is a navy, basically, there is at least there are several naval, basically, king's naval ships which are parked around in the area. 
Um, basically, merchants are coming and going pretty much at all hours throughout. Basically, throughout. So your arrival in the middle of the night um, does not find the town too asleep. Um, basically, basically, the town itself may be a little bit sleepy. But as you get closer to the port, uh, the sounds of taverns and inns bustling with sailors who have just arrived. Um, basically, as it can be heard, music is playing from all sorts of sources. Shouts and basically shouts and grunts and basically sounds of men working on ships and other things. Uh, can be heard throughout, basically echoing throughout, basically throughout the port area. Um, no one in particular pays for basically three, basically three road dust covered travelers of any particular interest. Um, you know, you're, you're certain that at least one or basically at least one or two of the more unsavory types have at least noted your noted, noted your entrance into town. Um, but as of right now, no one seems to be particularly paying you any attention. So what is your first order of business in town? Once we get into town, I think it's time to go procure a ship. <clears throat> Although... <clears throat> Yeah, we could probably do that at night, although it's a little awkward. I mean, again, there are there are ships coming and going at pretty much all hours. Um, you were given a con basically a letter of introduction to a particular captain uh, here yes. in Portsmouth. Um, I'm, we were told that we would find him either at the Drunken Mermaid if he was more desperate for work. Or at the Roaring Lion, if he was uh, recently successful. <laughs> so, so I suppose checking one or the other, or, or you know, both in succession, I guess, would be yeah. the order of the day. Okay. The mermaid sounds interesting. More my type of place. Okay. Um... So you'll make your way towards the, uh, basically, I guess basically first question, basically, obviously, how are all of you dressed currently? I know basically typical, basically, uh, Gareth, basically, Gareth pretty much has one outfit. Um, that's monk's robes, basically, with the hood up and basically, or hood down. Um, the other two of you are fairly richly dressed in your normal attire. Um, are you still wearing that or are basically, are you somehow dressing down or attempting to conceal that? Well, Ibrahim would be wearing traveling clothes, but okay. there might be some indicators of a uh, preference for, well, some indicators of his fastidiousness, like some embroidery on tra a traveling shirt, whereas most people's traveling shirt would be plain AF. Um, nothing, nothing so ostentatious as like gold thread, because that would be a little out of place while traveling cross country. Okay. Okay. But you know, definitely, you know, the nicest traveling clothes you could possibly have. All right, Ellen. I mean, I'm going to, I'm not going to dress down for anything. I don't even dress down for combat. Okay. Uh, so all of this case, so next question, are all three of you going to the Drunken Mermaid? Oh, I'm going for sure. Okay. Question. When we arrive outside, what? do we observe what kind of neighborhood is it uh it, what kind of uh physical shape is the building in in terms I, of how well repaired and what are the people outside it looking like so assuming you basically you grab a random person street rat something off of the street um and pretty much say hey where's the drunken mermaid um you will be given basically the directions you are basically 
basically, first of all, you will notice that um, depending on basically, basically the person will look all of you over when you ask and give you a quizzical look and reiterate the drunken mermaid. Just basically to yes. make sure that they've heard you correctly. And then again, look over the basically three of you, then shake the basically kind of shake their heads a little bit and be like, well, if it's going to give you directions to it um, and they'll just kind of wander off shaking their head. Um, as you start to head in that direction, you will quickly figure out that it is not the, uh, it is, it is definitely the rougher part of this, the rougher section of the port. It is by the water. Um, basically it's, basically it's not in the warehouse section, but it is, pretty much within walking distance of several ports of basically, basically, basically of the basically of the harbor itself you can basically basically when you first walked into the city you can tell the fact that it was a harbor city you could smell the sea and that faint tang of salt air and it is here the basically the smell of basically a pitch of basically of basically a fish of basically a fish both dead basically recently dead and long dead basically fills the air um basically there is basically trash and other stuff is obviously basically just kind of left wherever um basically in terms of people are basically people are not exactly uh too concerned about where in particular they're using the restroom when they're using it around in this section. Um, they're basically, basically people don't want to necessarily wait to make it to the outhouse. They'll go wherever. Gross. So that okay. is good. That is the sense you get just as you start heading in that direction. Basically, it's Rich. starting to head. It's starting to head downhill. Hmm. Go ahead and give me uh, perception alertness rolls. One day in. I will remember where that is. Okay, found it. Perception alertness. I pay close attention to what's going on. So it'd be all of you, basically, assuming, basically, I'm assuming everyone is going yeah, to. Yeah, I lost where the. Yeah, I'm, I lost where the pool is. Dice. Under dice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll figure this out. It's we'll fine. we'll, we'll be done playing by we'll, the time we'll, I figure we'll it out. This, we'll change systems. Uh, that was the wrong perception. There was perception investigation. Um, you asked for alertness. I did. I was reaffirming what you were saying that that is that was the wrong you may need to adjust that dipole huh you're I... supposed to roll perception alertness not perception oh. investigation fine 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 Alertness, alertness, alertness. You might have it a few lines up because we made one last time. Yeah, I do. Okay. All of you will uh, definitely, all of you will notice that you are attracting undue attention. It's Basically, it starts off relatively mild um, in terms of basically just a, basically a, 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 a one basically one, a couple people gambling over a barrel. One nudges the other, and basically, basically kind of looks in your direction. Um, so basically, some coughs that come out of basically come out from an alleyway. Um, the further you go in, basically, you notice that at least 
one person is kind of casually moving in the same direction you are. Um, you've gotten at least, a, basically, Ellen has definitely gotten at least one or two cat calls. Um, offers for offers for bedding, uh, offers for places to stay the rest of the night. Um, as you've continued into this section. Oh, you could, you could I will, do. of course, ignore the cat calls as they are so improper and uneducated. I will pretend that they were for me and be so, oh, thank you, thank you. I know. Okay. Which will probably really shut them up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, uh, a few winks. Yeah, at him, you know. Very definitely, just kind of basically, at least one person is sick behind a barrel. Um, <laughs> especially as your face comes through a firelight. Um, <laughs> so basically, you'll make it to this, you'll make it to the, the actual mermaids, uh, basically, the drunken mermaid, as it as it's called. Um, and it is a, it, it is slightly better conditioned than the rest of than the rest of it, but it is very definitely a tavern in full swing. Um, there are basically the building is basically it's been basically it's been here a while. It's a pretty much a fairly simple stone building. There are no real windows. Um, Obviously, there's no glass or anything like that. They just have some shutters, uh, some of which are closed, some of which are not. Um, loud and raucous laughter uh, basically kind of def pours through. As you're watching, at least one group of sailors stumbles out, dragging another one and with them. Um, you're not, a, basically, basically, from the little bit you can see at this distance, you're not certain if he is drunk um, or and cannot walk on his own because of that, or if he has been helped into that condition by somebody else. Yep. Okay. So can we actually safely make it into the uh, tavern at all, or I'm assuming it's a tavern by yeah. the name. Yeah, it's a tavern. You could, I mean, no one, basically, there is, there is nobody standing any, any sort of guard or anything like that. There is a, basically, you're poor towards the later part of the night. Um, so it's not a constant stream of people coming out, but basically going in and coming out in general, the traffic tends towards people leaving at this point. Um, there's a, there's a couple of people going in, but it's not. Basically, the, the more the greater percentage is flowing out at this point of night, uh, but there are definitely a decent sized crowd still inside. Well, okay. I guess we go in. I mean, yep. we're here to go find the. We're here to go for... find the thing. It's not like we don't have persuasion powers, right? Yeah, let's go inside. Okay. So, um, while I'm doing descriptions, basically for this, as a reminder, basically you do have under the powers tab, um, you will have general descriptions of what all of your powers are and what the, basically what the dice rolls are for them. Yep. Already there. So if you wish to review them, um, and basically in case, in case you wish to use them, that is where they are located. Um, Okay, so the basically, basically inside it is just exactly as you would expect it. Um, one corner, basically, there is a fireplace. There is in one corner of the room. Basically, there is basically, a somewhat pitiful fire, kind of basically, basically barely hangs on to life into it. Basically, in it, um, the rest of the place, basically, there are basically probably 10, ten, at least ten to fifteen different tables. Uh, scattered throughout the room, a large, sturdy, 
bar that looks like it was made out of basically probably probably a large chunk of driftwood uh, that has definitely been polished over time by uh, people leaning on it, people basically people leaning against it, people spilling drinks on it, things being placed on it. Basically, it's pitted. Basically, there are definitely chunks out of it from where various objects have been dropped, plunged, or otherwise. Uh, basically, otherwise have abused the surface of it. Um, several, basically, several tab, basically, several, basically, uh, basically, several weight stuff, as, as to use a more modern term for it, um, make their way through. It is not all, basically, it is not all females. There are just as they are male and females, um, making their way through the crowd, basically serving, basically serving, basically serving up, um, drinks or, food or other basically or basically anything else that basically someone might be asking for um you're fairly certain that basically basically at least some of the people in some of the people's laps are actually probably staff here you're guessing um because you witness at least one person get pulled into basically get pulled into somebody else's lap um hmm. uh, basically Basically, there's games of mumbly peg. There are games of dice. At least one game of cards. Uh, several people are obviously taking up residence for the evening, um, and basically are unconscious. On uh, at least several, a couple of the tables, piles of drool or other fluids, uh, basically leaking from their mouths. Um, just basically, you basically. Basically the, basically, the sounds, however, do somewhat. Basically, there is that not quite the jukebox stop level of absolutely absolute silence, um, but a a ripple, a wave of attention does kind of ripple through the crowd as you come in through the doors, um, and everyone kind of makes note of you. Um, there, basically, most of them return back to whatever they're doing. Um, some of them just basically at least one, at least one person who was somewhat passed out has kind of roused themselves and is just staring, um, at Ellen at this point. Um, one, basically at least one person kind of basically, basically seems to be having at least a couple of people break out in kind of angry conversations, poking and pointing. Um, and basically, uh, the in Visky and Visky, however, Visky, the barkeep behind it, Visky, kind of shouts out, "Greetings, travelers!" Visky. As we step through the door, I'm going to activate unseen presence. Okay. And uh, stay off to the side while the other two uh, are recognized and handle introductions. Okay. So Visky, so that Visky. Okay, for those basically, it, it renders those... me effectively invisible, like completely unnoticeable. Okay, the question: Do we know where you are, um, Ellen and Ibrahim, or are you effectively invisible from us too? <clears throat> um, <laughs> let's see. If you want to look, let's see. Um, basically, if you want to look for them, you can. Um, but you do not mm -hmm. automatically know where they are. Like, generally, you walk in and there's someone next to you, you're aware of their presence next to you. Um, and you yeah. basically you don't necessarily have to look to see them. Um, you're basically essentially what happens is you basically you're still aware of a presence there. But you yeah. don't think it's basically you don't necessarily associate that with Gareth, um, and you just kind of, when looking around, look right over him. Um, if you think okay. where's Gareth, then you can actually make a roll and actually attempt to locate him. Um, yep. Okay. It's good to know how this works. Mm -hmm. But I would assume we would be aware that that's a thing he does. Well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, we. We've met recently, yep. so that's why I was checking in. You're yep. basically you are all aware that that is something that his particular uh, clan of vampires are known for. Uh, it's one of the it's, it's one of the ways that they can actually 
make their whiskey exist, uh, whiskey outside, whiskey inside of humanity, uh, whiskey inside of civilization, as it were, because they tend to be ridiculously disfigured or ugly or otherwise, uh, basically otherwise otherwise noticeable. So otherwise, obviously a vampire. Yes. You know, or if, if not a vampire, then basically someone who has obviously been cursed by God. Uh, Got it. So, <laughs> basically, so they, the okay. barkeep will say, So, traveling couple, what brings you to our fair? Right, basically, lots of raucous shouts at that, basically, at that line. Establishment. Can I get you something to drink? I'm afraid that our... Uh, Wine reserves are a little low. You'll have to accept something a little bit more basic. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so I'll have a mead. Oh, a mead. Oh, well then, let me uh, let me check to see if I have some. Uh, well, now, now, wait a minute. I would expect that to be in supply at any tavern at this time. 1200s? Basically, I, basically, the answer is yes. Um, but it's definitely going to be the pricier. Basically, it's, it's not going to be the most common thing he has here. Um, I see. Like, <laughs> he, is, he is very definitely playing it up here. Uh, uh, okay. So he has, he makes a great show of kind of looking around. And what does the uh, lady wish? I am in the search of some for somebody. Um. Oh, and I'll, I'll, entertainment I'll for the evening. Um. Not exactly. Um. I um I'm looking for a particular captain. Uh, you wouldn't uh, happen to have seen what's his name? Um, captain Mayweather. Ca uh, captain um, Mayweather, by any chance? Basically, that could say a chorus of oh. Basically, throughout the. I will of course bribe accordingly. <laughs> So are you just walking up and are you bribing in advance or are you basically basically so this is like basically you are currently just walked in um and he basically, no, he's I kind of standing at you from the, I let him from give the bar. his spiel I let him give his spiel basically, he's kind of basically you basically he's just kind of addressing you from the bar um and you're at the door still basically, yeah. Oh no I'll maybe, wait till we walk up we to We should maybe have a, a private combo Yeah <laughs> Yeah, I wait. I wait till we walk up to the bar. I'm like, um, oh no, thank you. I'm I'm perfectly content on the on the drink part. I'll wait till we're at the bar to you know okay. try to inquire about the captain. All right. Um. Uh, I, I think she, lads. I think she thinks that her taste is too refined for anything we might happen. I mean, I don't know. Basically, what basically at least somebody suggested basically suggests that he could piss in a cup and see if that meets your basically meets your meets your satisfaction. Uh, he drank a good wine at least once at some point. Um, <laughs> still might basically there might the I taste will ignore. might linger. Um, so basically, I will you... ignore the the cat calling and the random okay. whatever. Okay, it will make your way up to the bar. Basically, he will. Basically, at, when you get up to the bar, his mood will change somewhat. And basically, he'll give you a look and be like, "Listen, I don't know if you just are rich, fancy lads out to out to out to see the sights, and you basically just happen to stumble into the wrong bar. But basically, basically I'm letting you know now that." Basically, if you're here and basically if you disappear from here because of some stupid thing or you pick a, you piss off the wrong person here, I ain't going to do anything to help you. And in fact, well, how about this, this then? We get out of you tell me where Captain Merriweather is and I'll get out of your hair. Captain and Mayweather. your bar. 
Uh, Captain Mayweather, and I'll get out of your bar. He just kind of narrows, he kind of narrows his eyes a little bit. You want to know where Captain Mayweather is? Who told you that he'd be here? Listen, my good man, we have a referral to meet him. Um, and I don't really wish to discuss our details. Um, as I know you wish, you would not wish to do so if you were in our place. We are perfectly capable of taking care of ourselves, so you need not worry. And of course, no repercussions will come back on you. Give me a, what's this go? Let's go with charisma. Let me double check something. I'm going to change your screen just briefly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, charisma, basically, we'll go with charisma expression. Charisma expression role? Yep. <clears throat> I'm going to call this Rico Suave. <laughs> okay. Don't take something. Okay, three successes. Okay, um, so he just kind of, uh, he kind of sighs and basically rolls his eyes and be like, uh, he basically maybe when there attracts the weirdest company. I never understand the man can the man's the best case, an amazing sailor who comes into money and loses money and comes into money and loses money, and somehow he always manages to find there seems to be a steady stream of people who are. Willing to throw more money at him. Ugh. All right. He's back there in the corner. He kind of basically indicates a a man who is basically pretty much drinking, basically drinking by himself. Um, basically has, basically has the air of someone who is here. Basically, basically they are drinking. They are, they are drinking until they basically, until they're either passed out uh, or until something else happens. Um, they're not chugging, they're not slamming, they're not gaming particularly, they're just kind of slowly drinking at this point. And just out of curiosity, when we walked in, did this man have any particular reaction to us that we noticed? Uh, give me perception alertness. All three of you can give me that. Perception alertness for all three of us. Yep. Uh, um, there it is. Okay. Hey. Yeah, Ellen. He noticed I'm you really, like really well on my phone. Yeah, Ellen. He noticed you just like everyone else noticed you. You didn't notice anything particular about it. Um, Ibrahim, basically, you're fairly certain. Basically, you're fairly certain his gaze kind of lingered on. Uh, Ellen for a little bit longer and kind of basically not recognition, but at least basically uh, understanding, kind of like uh, um, mm -hmm. Gareth. You think there was basically you think he kind of basically basically was uh, that understanding was kind of basically was kind of mixed with resignation. Resignation, interesting. Well, he we already know he's down in his luck or he wouldn't be in here. Uh -huh. Right. Okay, so uh Ibrahim will wander over. Okay. 
That's what, by the way, he basically he will eventually basically while you're talking to him and after you miss after it will actually produce a somewhat clean glass. Um and basically he'll spl have splashed some some amount of mead in it and overcharged you ridiculously for it. All right, that's fine. I'll take my reasonably clean glass of mead over with me. Okay. Um. Okay. Let's I will uh, follow everybody over and just kind of quietly stand nearby, maybe slightly behind him. Okay. <clears throat> basically, basically he'll he'll basically he'll look up basically and just kind of basically take another basically take a longer basically a slightly longer pull on his on his drink. Yes. Captain May Captain Mayweather, I presume. You have me at a disadvantage. I am Ibrahim Ayub. Fancy. And these are this is my <laughs> well, you know, I can't really help it. Uh and this is my um companion, Miss Ellen or Lady Ellen Bennett. Even fancier. My pleasure. So we are seek seeking passage to Rouen. <sighs> we have here a letter of introduction from um, what was her title? Was she a lady? Uh, she was uh, a courtier. That's okay. She didn't. That's okay. She didn't have a particular title outside of courtier. Okay, from one Merwin Hayward and. Uh, Ibrahim will hand him the letter. Um, there's definitely some recognition when you say the name. Um, he will uh, pick it up, flip it open, glance through it, nod. All right. So, you kind of look at, he looks at both of you. I, uh, I'm guessing you're here for the, uh, try to think basically what's, what, how would he phrase this? Um, basically for, basically for the inside passage. That's correct. Yeah. Marilyn sends me the strangest people. So just the two of you? Do you know? Uh, we have a third as well. Wow. One of you had the sense not to come down here. Must be the really rich one. Uh, By the way, you may want to check your... At that point in time, I can't help but chuckle <laughs> behind them. I can't of... hold that in. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of, he does kind of glance around no. him. But this could just kind of... Flip up. Quad look on his face. You've been here the whole time. You're not very observant. Turns back and kind of stares. This guy stare. This guy stares and kind of, then kind of goes cross-eyed a little bit and shakes his head. There's always one of you. It's harder to see than the rest. Great. He, this guy. He he very basically he very definitely basically starts and then stops himself from crossing himself. Mm. <laughs> Can't imagine why. He just kind of sighs and takes another he takes another drink. Um He I'm will basically Basically, he'll look. So, if you're going to Ron, you're wanting to basically, you're going to get to basically as far as I could take you is La Havre. Boats don't do too well to go. Basically, from there, you'll have to arrange basically get horses. I could probably basically, uh, I can give you the name of basically a decent stable master in town. Uh, you'll have to purchase them on your own. I don't provide that. 
That'd be uh, most agreeable. Thank you. <clears throat> you're probably wanting to leave as soon as possible, given the late hour. Uh, with tides, uh, it's a bit messy. We'll have to, basically, assuming you'll want to arrive around the same time that we leave. Well, at least after sundown. Yes, yes. We'll, we will want to embark now. I don't care. Uh, so long as we're on board, I don't necessarily care when we leave. But yes, we, we definitely will be leaving your ship after sundown, for sure. Strangest people. I don't quite get why this game, what is game, what is these people and their allergy to sunlight, but Merwin seems to know a lot of them. Yes, Look it's like really nice. quite an affliction. We wouldn't, I wouldn't want it damaging my complexion, my complexion. Yeah. More likely there's someone you don't want to see on the other end and basically he you know, doesn't want to see you and that's none of my business and that's not what you're paying me for. You're paying me to get you there and back. Now that brings us to the important part, which is me paying me. Um, go ahead and give me a intelligence... He will name an amount. Give me an intelligence commerce. Intelligence... Mm -hmm. Okay. Basically, all of you are aware that he is essentially marking up what the normal going price for a voyage of this type would be by 200%. Now, now, now. Who do you take us for? Complete fools? Now I take you as people who have a very particular set of demands who want me to leave now, then sail my ship around in the middle of the channel for a couple, basically for a random amount of time before sailing, off, basically finishing my sailing trip on to, across, basically to La Havre. I understand that we are a bit particular, but uh, I don't quite believe that our particularities account for that kind of difference in the normal going rates. He looks. He kind of looks at you. Do you have someone else in mind then? Um. I think we could use something like, uh, what's that power? The command. Yeah. I'm looking at my powers too. Uh, I'm thinking of like command and go for, no, you really don't want to swindle us kind of command. Like, uh, you know, let, let's be more reasonable about this. And so do I need to roll something for that to have him like come down to a normal going rate?
Uh, well, I suck at commerce, so. <laughs> what What did you say we could try to negotiate him down to a more reasonable price? Okay. Is it possible okay. to aid, or is this more of a one-person type of role? Oh, crap. Um, okay, well, let me just try and RP this for a second. Yep. Um, listen, my good man, I understand that you would want to mark up a typical passage from here to Le Havre, uh, and it's absolutely reasonable to do so, but I do think having us pay 200% on top of the normal fare is a little bit much. I would like to counter offer 50% markup. Um, no, I'm just trying to RP it. I, I missed whatever the actual number was. Oh, okay. Right, right. Saying 50%. Yep, I'm with you. Yep.
Does Gareth have any information he can give him? Is there? Perhaps we could help you find some cargo. Just thinking out loud. You know, whichever works better for you. I'm on mute. That's my problem. Well, I mean, you're working on this. You're working on kind of uh, a short time schedule here. If you're wanting to leave in the next couple of hours. True, true. But if you're willing to promise that you can get me something within the next couple of hours, that I can. I'm trying to I'm trying to brainstorm if there's an easy way to. Uh... Get him some cargo, maybe liberated, as it were. Does so? The question is: Do do any of us have contacts in Lahav uh, that we could leverage to fill his ship back up to bring back across yeah. to Portsmouth? <clears throat> okay, basically, this is the this is where that pliable nature of. Uh, context comes into play if you're wanting to essentially kind of set one of your contacts into place as basically and you want to come up with something you think that would fill that i'm willing to let you do that but it has to be basically it looks, that, again that, it's like it's something that makes sense i i mean i think that having an underworld contact in the Hive would make sense for gareth because you know that's kind of the appropriate place for him to have built part of his intelligence network. So I can't imagine that having a contact that could help liberate some cargo would be terribly challenging. And clearly this captain doesn't care how we come about, come by it. <clears throat> yes, I do think we can make that happen. Yeah. Happily dedicate one of my uh, contacts to this. Make a note of that. <laughs> what did I scroll down for? Where did the heck did oh oops? Name? Do you want to give me a name for that contact or do you want to, um... you want us to just deal with it as that comes? That's a great question. Um, oh no, I don't have a name off the top of my head. Uh, I'll, I'll just go with up. Renee. There we go. Remy. Renee. Uh, or Martin could come up with a more French, a more appropriate ratty Frenchman who works in a, works in the other, an underworld Harvard, underworld merchant in La Harvard, La Havre. Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold up. <laughs> I was trying All to think of the most of French like... name I could come up with. Okay. <laughs> All I could think of is like a pencil fin mustache. <laughs> Pierre, it is. Yeah. Oh, You'll find Pierre down by the pier. I'm telling on you. <laughs> find Pierre down by the pier. <laughs> Funny uncle. story. I have an uncle named Pierre. Ha. That's awesome. Apparently, you consider your uncle the epitome of French, um, or at least our, our underworld ratty Frenchman. Um, all right, so, um, basically, so you basically you promised him that you could get him some cargo in Lahav. Um, yeah, okay. Pierre can help you out, no problem. He says, "All right." In that case, because it would be 
basically, I have basically, basically, I'm taking a little bit of a risk here. Um, pay me a hundred and fifty, and I will basically, I a hundred fifty percent, and I will refund you the extra hundred percent. Again, this is all in actual amounts. Uh, when you basically, when you bring me my cargo. And if it's particularly good, maybe I'll give you even more. Hmm. Yes, yes. Sounds agreeable. Deal. Okay, I have to run to the restroom. I'll be right back. Okay. We'll uh, take a brief break. I'm looking for notes. Here, there it is. I don't know how much money I have. How do I come up? Do we have the cash? Uh, what's your resources level? More? Like I am assuming between Ellen and oh resources one yeah you're you have basically let's see here where is the I actually have the book Ugh. well they're <laughs> in the restroom resources two is generally enough to do so basically like if I remember correctly both Ellen and uh Ibrahim have resources two I think yep. Um, that makes it super easy then. Do they have resources too? Wow, that's rude. To double check that, because two is two is sufficient. Huh? Which seems low for someone who dresses like that. Oh. Um. Yeah, they actually gave you resources. Wait, no, Ellen cannot have resources one. Really? Yes, they gave Ellen resources one. Wow. Okay. Well then, that's impressive. Yep. Um, she dresses like a courtier of high status, somehow. Um... I... All right, good times. So I we will, we will just up. assume that between you and Ibrahim, you have enough. Ibrahim also has resources one. Wow. Okay, quick start. I know you like to uh, spread things around, but that's a little silly. I'm going to assume that they should probably actually have resources three, both of them. <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah. Unless they did something completely different with resources in the 20th anniversary. Because uh, admittedly, I'm using the non 20th anniversary book because I actually bought the book back when it was you know, somewhat new. Actually, not too new. I got it for $18 as opposed to full price. Nice. I have a little sticker still on it. I return. Ugh. Vampire, $18. Save her more, I got it. Actually, I wonder if I... Did I buy this one, or did I get it from... Eh, who knows. Uh, if Werewolf Paladin, or Werewolf gaming was in the chat he probably could tell me he, he may he probably would remember because he was probably around when i got it one way or another either i got it from him <laughs> i either got it from him got it from tr or bought it myself yeah yeah that, definitely one of those that that sounds about right yep okay <laughs> so you will basically bustle your. Basically, is anyone doing anything? Basically, so last basically last call, basically the basically the journey across the sea. Um, the channel is um, relatively calm. How uh, uh, easy would it be to find some food before we leave? I mean, are we going to be able to? Do that here without arousing suspicion is really what I'm asking. Basically, how much time are you willing to devote to doing it? 
the answer basically the answer is you're in a port basically you're in a port there is mm -hmm. basically people die basically it is basically you're in the rough section of town basically people die here all the time if you just want to grab somebody basically drain them knock them out and chuck them in the basically and chuck them in the in the harbor odds are good basically odds are good you could probably get away with that um if you're oh, wanting yeah. to be that, more that, that subtle about it um you can basically you can attempt to uh basically you can attempt to pull somebody and it oh at least one of you actually that's right actually the ventrue's requirement here is actually not too terrible um no, it sounds like Martine would be able to find food easily. Yeah. Finding finding somebody that's uh that's not particularly healthy in a poor, in this part of town should not be that hard. No. No. I don't remember whether you said I have any particular predilections. Uh, no, whether that's great. Does. Ventura, the that's great. You can shoot that's great if you wish to as your character. Um, have a predilection for basically you prefer to deal with basically you prefer to deal with things in certain ways. Um, you can 100% basically have that as a role playing thing. Martine is the only person who has a requirement of it just doesn't work unless it is. Uh, Got it. So, so Martine's clan basically exists to cull the herds of humanity. Well, no, basically, mm. they basically they are so snooty. It is literally they have bred it into themselves that every one of them basically has a particular taste, um, and they are so particularly snooty, they are so insanely snooty and burdened with the basically burdened with the requirement to rule that they have mentally mind gamed themselves into not being able to eat anything else that won't oh my god that's such a quirk okay yeah. all right well i mean if we're already down it's a two-day journey as far as we are in... actually yeah, if it's given the so other what... thing it's going to be about three probably yeah I think I should eat on this side. So Ibrahim will find some food and try to be as discreet as possible, given the amount of time he has. Okay. Are you going for... Let's see. Are you going for first available? Or are you, are you going to grab um, something particular? Um, no. No. I mean, he's basically not just going to grab somebody in plain sight and do the thing. Okay. Like, like he's going to go a few streets over into an alley and find somebody who's not going to be missed quickly. <laughs> okay. Um... This is so weird, by the way. It is basically, it is, this is the one aspect of Vampire that basically some people love and some people hate and some people, basically, some people don't care about it one way or another. It is a... Basically, it's a strange kind of power dynamic. Um, and some people are like, basically, it sounds like you're more of the, yeah, no, let's just roll dice and move on uh, type. That's how, uh, yeah, that's how I personally feel as yep. the player out of character. <laughs> yes. That's, yeah. That is that, fine. That makes sense. Um, so basically, what I'm going to have you do, basically, in terms of basically how effective you're going to be. Um, let's see here. Ibrahim doesn't have stealth, really. So it's good. You're going to rely on your subterfuge, and you're probably going to go with charisma. Let's go with manipulation subterfuge. Basically, essentially, you're going to basically lure somebody, basically lure somebody somewhere, take care of it, um, and basically the role will give it. Basically, will tell me just how much, how effective uh, you are. That's at three successes. Uh, no, that was a my last roll. Oh, I'm looking roll. for okay. subterfuge. Oh, that was it. Okay. Oh. There it is. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, you are you are easily able to allure someone. Uh, basically, uh, they basically they are not particularly basically 
They have biscuits. They are not biscuit. Biscuit. One of the bar biscuit. One of the barmaids. Um, you are able to do biscuit. Lure away, and you biscuit. You both leave the situation feeling happy about what happened. Um, she's nice. had a little bit of an adventure, and biscuit feels slightly woozy. Um, and you are less hungry than you were before. Um, okay. Um... <laughs> uh, do you need another roll? <laughs> um. Yes, go ahead and give me a, just a straight, uh, give me a d10 and add two as well. d10 plus two. That's two d10. Oh, I did. Sorry. We'll just take the first one. Okay. Um, wow, she's really tipsy. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's because I'm intoxicating, yo. <laughs> okay. Um, so that will make Does that mean I can just max, max my blood? You can max your blood. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, Ellen. I mean, if we're going, yeah, I'm going to do the same. You just go. So I'm rolling what? Uh, uh, same 2d10, same thing. Well, no, basically, no, you're, basically, you're basically you're rolling, but basically, you're going to roll manipulation. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Basically, basically, either basically, you're probably leaning towards empathy. Um, because I'm guessing you're, fi you're finding someone who is not feeling well and offering them relief, if not if just for a while. Essentially. Okay. Ten, nine, seven. Okay, sure. Um, not surprisingly, basically, especially around this, especially here, you find some. You find some. You find some sailor who is basically. Scurvy is still a thing. Um, mm, the sweet taste of scurvy in the evening. Um, yeah. Yeah. I have a clarifying question. You go ahead. If, if a vampire feeds on a human who has a communicable illness, what happens? Diseases generally don't transfer over because they're not you're not living. It basically, the, basically, you have blood, but you don't really have organs, so the disease just doesn't do anything. Um, some things do transfer over. Uh, for example, if you had gone for a particularly drunk individual or something like that, um, that can transfer over. If you decide to drink someone who is um, magically inclined, um, their blood could be more potent and they actually give they actually get bonuses. If you take somebody on drugs, if you're doing a more modern setting, um, I mean they have drugs back in, they're just not as commonplace as it were. Um, they didn't exactly have meth. Yeah, basically you're not likely to get so, someone on meth, but or LSD, but you might find somebody hopped up on some weird berries. Um So I have to ask, since we're in a port, not yes. too far from a CD bar. Um, or a seedy tavern, one um, where company might be found. Um, I would assume that with the, the description you gave that I would not have to be worried about things like, say, uh, venereal disease. <laughs> <laughs> no, again, you are... Uh, basically, you In are dead. You are dead. You don't have, basically, you don't necessarily, you don't have any, uh, anything for this disease to work on. So... Basically, I think there there are some exceptions right. for basically like if it's a particularly basically there are supernatural diseases that can make it can bridge the gap, but basically, got it. After basically, the guy has a cold doesn't mean you sip him and then basically you start coughing afterwards. As hilarious as that might be, um, the only basically the only one they really call out is that one. Um. Three successes and basically and a crit basically means the fact that you're pretty much like the first person that basically that basically you quickly like one of the guys who was like who like kind of was just staring at you. That one guy who basically raised his head and just kept staring. 
Um, basically, it's the one who basically managed to, uh, basically, who is more than willing to spend some, basically, spend some time, basically, basically in your, in your gentle care. Um, go ahead and, I actually, basically, I guess I ask you the question because it doesn't actually matter. Um, assuming you're just roll, basically, assuming how basically how much you can get, basically, you basically with that roll with the crit, you can get as much as you want between one and ten. Um, note that if you pick the number ten, um, you are basically you're dealing with a body afterwards. Four is fine. Okay. So I roll it. D10 then? No, just you're getting you basically tell me you could take oh, you basically I because you four. because you crit, you can pick whatever number you want. Oh, I'm just gonna get my four and refill my blood pool and call it okay. good. I'm not gonna be greedy about it. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of greedy, hey Gareth, what are you doing? I'm going to uh um Probably find an animal on the way to the ship. How uh, uncouth. Maybe a rat, maybe a pig, I don't know. Maybe oh, a, so an gross. old horse that looks like it's almost, you know, at the end of its life anyway. Waste not. Okay. Like an entire horse? No. Even an old sick horse is huge. Yeah, that's basically, fine. Basically, basically, the rules for animal blood is that animal blood, basically, while there may be more of it, it is still less effective. Um, like, an entire cow is considered to have five. Basically, the most you can get out of a cow is five. The most you can get out of a rat is one quarter. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, find, we'll find a horse, an old an old horse i mean they've got to be working horses around here oh there are basically there are basically there are there are there are both horses which are being shipped back and forth there are horses which are kept to um basically too risky to ride there are horses which are heading for the glue factory as it were um, there we go that's what i'm looking for okay uh give me uh, i won't miss it give me deck stealth Because you're essentially yeah. basically breaking in, drinking it, and getting out. Dex and stealth. Okay, two successes, and one of which is a crit. No ones, no ones. Okay. Yeah, uh, so basically you can, basically you will be able to... Um, Basically, go ahead and basically roll, basically, eh, two successes. Yeah, roll a d10, uh, divide it in half, then add two. And that is the, basically, that is the most you can get. And basically, and it caps at five. Obviously, because you're dividing it in half. Duh. Um, yep, perfect, thanks. Okay. That gets me up to full. That's all I needed. Okay. Um. By the way, I assume we're bringing Tony's character along. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Tony's character. Okay. Basically, if basically if we continue beyond this point, which as a note, it is six thirty right now. Um. So depending on basically what people's schedules are, we can save this before we go across the water. Um. Or we can continue for a little longer. I don't know what people's preferences are. Should probably wrap up pretty soon, but we can probably get on the boat and get underway, yeah. and then. Yeah, basically, I basically, I am assuming basically you will basically after that you will be able to get onto the boat. Uh, you will load in. Mm -hmm. Basically, he has a room which, um, basically, basically does not have basically does not have any particular uh, windows or anything like that. It's pretty much part of the hold, uh, which has been converted into separate rooms. Um, so he's given up hold space for this. Uh, for this area, mm -hmm. um, the advantage, basically the disadvantage is that you're basically you're slightly you're under the decks, um, but uh, you are basically it is definitely safer down here. Basically, you can tell the fact that it's been reinforced and tarred, and um, there basically 
there's even so there's even some like physical curtains or other stuff has been kind of put up around the room uh to ensure that no light could possibly get in um there are several beds inside of the room um oh there are also basically large crates not quite coffins uh but definitely just large boxes which if you look into them there is basically there is the appearance of dirt has been scattered across the bottom of it uh there are some who there are some who stick to the old ways as it were um and so who are forced to um but basically basically the area is as great as you were basically as you were led to believe and your journey across will be uneventful unless you wish to make it more eventful um he and the rest of the crew will very deliberately go out of their way to avoid you um unless you seek them out um and you will very definitely catch basically multiple members of the crew basically if they don't think you're looking making the sign of the cross um, or otherwise gri- grasping some basically, basically some form of religious iconography or something like that. Um, but shocking nobody, nobody on this boat is basically enough of a, a enough of a true believer uh, to cause you any concern. I Mr. mean, I kind of assumed that we could win a fight if we had to anyway so i'm not worried about it <laughs> well no no that's okay yeah. yeah that's okay you could easily take any of these mortals and that's okay like it's not even causing you like discomfort or something like that um that's okay for this okay, uh in this okay, that's okay, in the game as a whole that's okay, if a human actually wants to and in some way force a vampire back with the power of his faith he has to have certain levels of Basically, certain levels of true faith, which are surprisingly rare. Um, Shocker. Yeah. Imagine that. So, you will arrive in Lahav, basically, as he on the schedule he gave you. Uh, you will spend the four, the four points uh, to wake up each night. Or basically... Actually, I think I think it was three. It was three. That's right now four. Yeah, three. you said three. Yeah, sorry, my brain, my brain, my brain. I said two, and then I'm like, oh no, because of the the time you have to arrive, it's going to take a little bit longer, because it's a hundred and some odd mile, and you get about fifty miles a day, um, so it's three with essentially with the extra time added in um, to arrive at that evening. Um, it's going there will be a pounding on your door, letting you know. Um, there is a, a there, is a, there is a general pounding on your door that there's been every night, uh, letting you guys know that they basically that it, the sun has set. Um, yeah, basically, this time the that message is accompanied by we expect to be in the harbor, basically, in the harbor within, within the hour. Very good, thank you. Very nice. Appreciate it. As usual, they basically, as usual, they, well, they've already wandered off. You can hear them muttering. <laughs> uh, and you will Computer come up on this very obviously enjoying their discomfort. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I would never. Okay. Um, you will basically... I probably try to to recruit at least two members of the crew into my uh, communication network. Anyway, <laughs> you're willing to pay. They are willing to play. Of course. Uh. So uh, you will basically you will arrive up on deck and basically find yourself basically. Pretty much sailing, almost basically, almost basically the, the, the harbor in sight, and you basically uh, sailing towards it. Um, the captain will just kind of basically, well, basically, kind of nod to you as you come up and says, "As promised, we're here. It's night." 
and now basically now used to basically now I expect that you will basically uh, basically you will provide me my cargo or I will keep your money. Of course, of course, of course. Um, give me at least twenty four hours. Uh, that is fine. It is, in fact, your money. All right. Okay. Uh, and then you will disembark. So, um, do we want to call it there, or do you want to... Yeah. Okay. That works for me. All yeah, I right. think call it there. It's a logical stopping place. Okay, so I'll put the mic. All right. Cool. So... Again, this is basically, basically for those of you who are basically those of you who have been watching in. Thank you for basically thank you for watching and listening. If you've been paying attention, if you've been listening along, um, this is basically the lore link channel. What we do here is that, basically, as you can see below me, um, as I give my spiel, um, basically this is the project management system that I use for our uh, project management campaign management system that uh, basically we have created here that we use for keeping track of things like you saw me taking notes, looking up things uh, throughout the course of the adventure. Helps keep things straight, helps keep organized, especially in a complicated game like Vampire where so many different things can happen at, at a given point and basically people's relationships and other things build off of that. Um, and especially if you're not gaming every night or every day, you basically you're wanting to keep track of those notes, and that's the advantage to a system like uh, basically like Lorelink. If you want to know more about it, uh, basically twenty is helpfully prompted our bot to post the link in chat. We actually have <laughs> just have a brand new website. Um, it's gonna is up, and this is all pretty and nice, and has all sorts of interesting links and other information on it. Um, it will be continued to be updated as it goes on, so keep checking back there. Um, basically, if you're looking for, if you're interested in it, go there. There we have an alpha, which is a free alpha, which is currently available. You can head over there, and basically, as the link says, you can sign up, give us feedback, help guide us. If there are features that you're like, oh, I wish I could get this or that, then basically you can start. Basically, you can communicate with us and give us the feedback that we need to make a better product for you. Um, as basically other ways, um, you can of course subscribe. Basically, basically subscribe to this. Just subscribe. Follow, follow. That's the word I'm looking for. Follow this channel, um, and that will basically that will help you with basically that will help us uh, help us get basically basically continue to get the word out and help you by letting you know when we are on the air. Um, you can basically this video will be posted on YouTube later. Um, and that will basically you can subscribe and basically like the video on that one. We almost have a YouTube site; it's somewhere. Um, we have we, do, we have a YouTube channel. This video and the previous video will be going up there relatively soon. I download the other ones, pull it off of here, then I will update it. I just have to it takes a little bit of time because I have to stop and go through and make sure the captions are cleaned up. Because one of the things we we want to do here is make sure that all of our stuff, whether it's our products, our videos, um, or basically whatever else we're doing, is accessible to everyone. Because we're not basically, to basically, it is everybody can everybody can role play. It's a basically it is not a whether and basically like when we had the conversation here with twenty in terms of how they felt on their character, how they want to deal with that. That's that's how role-playing should be. It's very accepting. It's very accept accessible in terms of making sure that everyone can come to the table, everyone can have a good time, everyone can play. And that's what that's that is kind of what is kind of what we want to live by. So I I when I post videos, I need to make sure that I get the captioning cleaned up as much as I can. Um, to basically allow basically allow everyone to enjoy them. Um, and basically, in terms of future things that we will be doing, uh, we will be doing um, Twitter and YouTube. Oh, yes, we also have a Twitter thing as well. Okay, just YouTube. Okay. Um, there's Twitter. Yeah, we have Twitter. You can follow and join in conversations on there. We have, we have lots of fun questions going on over there. We have a newsletter that comes out fairly regularly. Um, future things we will be doing next week around this time, we will have some kind of stream. We'll decide what we're doing. It may be more of this. It may be me planning something out, um, or it may be just us playing a role-playing related video game. We're going to pay attention to the. We will 
Jeske again, if you're listening, make sure you subscribe to this. If you follow the Twitch channel, you'll find out when we go live. If you follow us, uh, follow us on Twitter, uh, the Twitter will update the stream schedule. We'll have an updated stream schedule. Usually at the on Monday, we will announce what we're doing. Uh, last thing, and definitely not least, um, on Friday of this week, starting at 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, the last Eastern daylight time, um, we will be we will be playing a we, basically we will be playing some sort of game. I believe we have had the discussions and we have chosen. Uh, we are going to be playing mini basically we're playing golf with friends. Uh, so there will yeah. be a group of us who will be uh, basically throwing basically attempting to basically attempting to hit balls into tiny holes and mostly just shouting at things as we generally hit our balls actually into space. Um, <laughs> But hilarious it's it's funny it is generally just <laughs> comedy all around so please follow this come watch laugh with us uh laugh at us most likely um and if you are able to please give and donate to the extra it's so a link you can see up there um as we are play doing this to raise awareness for the extra life charity um in particular we're raising money for riley's children's hospital which is located in my in our hometown here uh in indianapolis um, which we basically they do incredibly good work with uh, basically with children and things like that. Uh, some of which has benefited some of us in our in this group, um, and so basically we will we always enjoy basically especially as we enter this kind of giving season. We always want to look to give back to basically those who have helped, um, and all this. And so that is all of our current plans. So. There is plenty to do, plenty to see, and as such, there is plenty for us to do. So I will basically let us all go so we can all join our 16 different plans for the week. Um, happy All Saints Day. Hope you had a happy Halloween and catch you all later. <laughs>